today we're going to be doing a brake job on a 2009 Ford Escape and we're going to be trying out the Wagner ThermoQuiet Ceramics on here. This is my own personal vehicle so we're going to be trying them out and I wanted them because the other ones are just leaving so much dust on the front wheels. You know, dark black dust on there. I wanted ceramics for the lower dust count on there. And then of course I'm using the Ford OEM rotors. These are the OE spec ones that have the spray on coating on them with no oil. So they're a little bit easier to uh, you know, throw them on the vehicle and not worry about it. You don't need to take off this coating on there and you don't have to wash off no uh, oil coating on there either for, for rust protection. So these are a higher quality spec rotor compared to other manufacturers and they're not that much. So I go with the Motorcraft for the rotors and usually the Motorcraft pads too, but today because of the dust we're going with the Wagner ThermoQuiets which is actually the brand and um, series, I guess you could say, that Ford recommends for even warranty repairs if their stuff for some reason is not available. They want you using this stuff, so it's got to be up to OE spec on it for sure. Okay, so I got you nice and close here. I figure you don't need to see my ugly mug and you want to see what the heck we're doing uh, so you can get it done right. I'm going to walk you through it right now. First thing you want to do in any escape, oh wait, newer, I think they fixed it. But you want to inspect your brake lines. These have these these hoses have a real problem with cracking and blowing out. So while you're in here, got the wheel off. Inspect your brake hoses all the way up to right here. The rest of the brake system has a good integrity to it, but whereas these ones they have a problem uh, with the hoses cracking and blowing out. It's not a good situation. I think in 08 they fixed it, and these have lines in them, ribs like this, long ways. Those ones are okay. Those seem to be just fine. The ones that are smooth are prone to cracking, so inspect those. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is there's, there's a cap here and here for the pins that hold the caliper on. We're going to pop those off. They look something like that, right? Might even just come right off, but I use a little cat claw. Okay, so depending on your model year, um, you might have a 7mm or an 8mm hex for your caliper slide pins right here. I think it was 2008 and 09. They went to the 9mm, which is a really odd size hex on there. You have to find it individually. Lyle makes them. And they're usually sold individually at auto parts stores. Um, whereas otherwise, it's going to be a 7mm, which is a very common size. So before 08, it should be 7 millimeter, and after 09, like 10 on, it should be back to 7 millimeter. So we're going to pull those out now, and they shouldn't be too tight in there. And make sure you use an extension, especially for the top one. You don't want to be fighting right next to this hose and putting a lot of pressure on it. Uh, coming out, ruining the hose, and then going back in, you have potential to cross thread. So use an extension on your ratchet. And they're only threaded in there so far, and after that you can push them out from the back side here. You'll see the threads. And then you can just grab the pins after that. That's how they look. So we're going to put those to the side. We're going to clean them up. And this just looks like I'm having a little bit of trouble here because i got to stand off to the side so you guys can see what's going on. Otherwise, this job is very, very simple. So we're going to take our rags, and we're going to clean up the pins on here, these slide pins any corrosion you want to get off of there and all that and then we're going to re-grease them at the end here okay then you don't have to usually turn this but I'm going to turn it so you guys can see what the heck am I doing we need to get this uh, anchor right here off of here it's like an anti-rattle clip and it actually secures the outside of the caliper to the caliper bracket on here so it's very important the the good brake the better brake uh, kits the brake pad kits usually come with a new one on there and you want to change it uh, if they do include it because these wear out over time they're just spring steel not spring steam spring steel now what I use is a big pair of channel locks like this and we're going to take it we're going to compress it 
and then we're going to take our cat claw or flat blade screwdriver and we're simply going to pop it off of there. Let's see if I can do it. Being off to the side here, I'm a little... There you go. And then... At this point, what I like to do is with your wood clamp or C-clamp, whatever, you have on hand, we're gonna start compressing that piston back into the bore here on the caliper. I like to do it initially, at least while it's all together like this. Because a lot of times it gets caught on the rust ridge here. Just take it, and we'll just compress it in so we can get it loose, and then the caliper will just flop off to the side. Once it's compressed in far enough, we can get this out of the way. We'll finish compressing it in a second here. Now these calipers, they can be heavy. You don't want them hanging on the brake hose. So you just get a painter's hook, something like that, piece of wire, piece of you know rope, whatever, or you can simply lay it across the knuckle. Whatever you do, just don't let it hang uh, by the hose. So I put mine up here and out of the way, like so. And then your pads, especially in the escapes, they should just come right off on there. On the back side, right here and right here is an 18 millimeter bolt. Take that off. Bracket off to the side. And then again, for instructional purposes only, I'm gonna turn it back to you guys. The face of it here. Now, if you're having a problem where it doesn't flop off just like this, and it's just stuck on there and won't come off, you're gonna have to hit it. Nice and hard on the face of it there, and that'll break the bond with the face of the hub right here. Okay, now we're down to the bare bones here, ready to start reassembling. It's time to start cleaning and lubricating. What I like to do on the face of the, ro of the uh, hub here is clean it up and then put a thin layer on the face of it of anti-seize, nothing on a thread. You do not want thread anti-seize on the thread. Your wheel will fly off, it's happened before. So you wanna just put it on the face here. When we're done, I'll show you that. Also, right here where your caliper bracket mounts to the knuckle, if this is really, really bad, you wanna clean that up too. So everything mounts flush and square on there. Now you can use a wire brush, but of course, the best thing to have is a little angle grinder like this and an abrasive disc on there. And you just want to get it smooth again so it's not built up rust on there and causing your rotor to have like a, a, a warpage to it because then you're going to get that feeling in your pedal and on your steering wheel obviously, especially at higher speeds. And then we're going to clean a brake clean before you apply the anti-seize. And you want to spray it at an angle like this, not directly on. You can actually wash out the seal bearings in there. It's such a thin solvent. And then we're going to wipe it by hand also before we do any air blow drying or anything weird like that. Get all the rest of this garbage off of here, anything free rust. It's gonna get between the hub and the rotor. You don't want that. So we gotta clean it up really nice. And then we're just gonna apply a regular anti-seize on there. 
like so. We're just gonna put a slathering of it on there, like this, in between each one of these, and then we can smear it with our, our hands on here, our fingers. Make sure you use gloves with this stuff, though, as it'll stain your fingers. That's why people call it never leaves instead of anti-seize. Ingrains itself in clothing and everything else. And basically it's a it's a ground up, finely ground up metal, so that's why it just stains everything and gets into everything. It's what it is. So we're gonna put it on here. Do around the hub right here in the center. We're gonna move it around with our fingers. You only need a real light layer on here. And remember, avoid the threads. Something like this. Real light coating, and that'll protect it and of course prevent any kind of corrosion between the metals and the salt and all that stuff. Get our caliper back down here. Just gonna rest it right here. And then we're gonna finish compressing it all the way back in. And you'll know when it's done. And it's bottomed out, it'll be a dead stop. Right there. Pistons all the way back in. And then what you may notice is something like this. You see how it's all poofed up on here? That's just air that's trapped in there. This is only a dust seal, but it's still a good idea to pop it out of there. So all you gotta do is get a pick or a flat blade screwdriver, get underneath here and pick it up, and it will release the pent up air in there. You see how it rolls back over like that? And then you just kind of fix so it rolls over right. At this point, we're gonna start cleaning this up. Wire brush is all it really needs. Get the ears out here. And then of course the piston face on it. Just watch the boot. Doesn't take much. And then same thing, spray away from the piston on here in a way. And then we're going to wipe it down. And the next thing we're going to clean is the caliper bracket itself. All you need is a wire brush, same thing. And we're going to clean the guides here where the pad actually rides. Make sure it's all the garbage is clean out of there. We're going to spray a brake clean and then we're going to start greasing it with the silicone brake with grease on there. And then this will be all done. Okay, so next thing you got to do is start greasing everything up and getting it all back together. So what I use is a silicone brake grease from Motorcraft. It's a nice thick grease that actually stays on there through the weather and everything else. It'll actually stick to it. It's nice thick grease compared to other ones that are just really thin. Okay, so onto the caliper on here. What we're going to do is grease the ears here and then the circumference of the piston and that'll prevent any kind of squeaks going down the road. And that's grease. And the same thing with these pins. We're gonna grease the smooth part here on the outside. Something like that. Don't get it on the threads or inside. You don't need to. You just need to get the outside so it can slide on there. And then this bracket right here, again, after we cleaned it up, we're going to grease everywhere right here where those pads actually slide back and forth as you're breaking and releasing on there. Something like this. It's a thin layer on there. You don't put too much because then it can get on the pad material. Something like that. 
And the reason why I grease everything all at once like that is because your hands are just gonna get full of the grease and you don't wanna be touching the pads and your brake rotor surface and all that. So now it's a good time to clean your hands. Everything else should be clean and greased and we can start reassembling. Get our rotor around here. Okay, let's get our bracket back on for the caliper, our caliper anchor plate bracket. First thing you want to do is take your two 18 millimeter bolts and put a little bit of blue thread locker on both of them. Let me get start lining it up and bolting it up on here. I do the top bolt first, it's easier to see what the heck you're doing. And you can line it up a lot easier that way. And then the actual torque spec on these is 130 foot-pounds. Put our outer pad on here. Just slide right in there. Get our caliper down. And just be careful with the grease and get this pop back into there. Like so. And that simply falls down and into place. Just make sure you didn't twist your brake hose. After that, take your caliper slide pins and just pop them into there. And we're gonna thread them in by hand. Make sure you don't cross thread because these are kind of easy to cross thread in there. And you could do one at a time as far as tightening them down fully because they're totally floating inside of there. And again, I do a top one so I can see what the heck I'm doing. And you'll feel it bite and it'll start, you can start seeing it get sucked into there. it for now and then the torque spec on these is 40 foot-pounds okay and we'll throw our dust caps back on since we're all torqued down and back together and then we're gonna go back on the outside here to put that clamp back on that support now there's one other area I want to put this grease on, and that's right here on the back side. You'll see a little mark where that bracket, that brace, rubs on. You want to put a little bit of grease there. Okay, so going back in with this, it can be a little tricky unless you know the little tricks to it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take it, and we're going to hook the little nub in there into the caliper. Okay, and then down here it's going to be hooked. And we're going to take it. Compress it by hand so it's hooked behind here, right? And then we're kind of going to do the same thing. We're going to compress it with our channel locks until it falls into there. And then you want to make sure these tangs are hooked behind there so we're going to give it a little tap. And you see they're hooked behind there now? And that's fully secured now. Put your tire back on, obviously, your wheel. And then we're going to torque these lug nuts down to 100 foot-pounds. Now before you go and jump in the vehicle and go for a test drive to see how your new brakes are, make sure while it's started and you're in park that you go over and hit the brakes quite a few times so you get a nice firm pedal engine running because it's going to travel really far down while it's pushing all those pistons out to meet your new pads and there's going to be no brakes at first. So you need to get the full hard pedal before you ever take it out of park, very important. Okay, so hopefully this video is a lot better than the first one I put out way back when I first started uh, on YouTube here. It was kind of uh, upright and it was bad, let's just say that. So this one should be a lot more detailed and a lot more clear uh, so you can see how to do this brake job pretty easy. This applies to all the Ford Escapes up until 2012. They're all basically the same. You'll see once you get in there, uh, 09, 02, it doesn't matter. All the escapes are basically the same except for the 
brand new ones that are totally different, obviously. So hopefully this helps.